Hey everybody, I was just about to put this compost out on the lawn, but you know, it looks like it might rain today and I don't want all these nutrients to just end up running off and ending up in the storm drains. So I'll probably save this project for another day. Uh, oh, hey, you know that my cousin and her friend, they know a lot of other tips that you can do to help fight pollution. Well, I'm meeting up with them in just a few. So let's see what they have to say about it. In the meantime, welcome to Woodsy Outlaw 3. Pew, pew, pew. Hey, y'all. Hey, hey I'm Chad. What's up? <laughs> oh, and hey, y'all. Welcome to Woodsy Owl Live 3, brought to you by the USDA Forest Service and the Natural Enquirer. I'd like to introduce you to my super smart pollution experts. I'm Montana. And I'm Genesis. And I'm her big cousin, M. Chad Edwards. Now, Woodsy Owl has got a lot of famous things, but its most famous one is... Give, Give a, a hoot, hoot don't, don't pollute. So for Woodsy Owl Live 3, we're doing a series of three videos talking about pollution. In our two previous episodes, we talked about what scientists are doing to prevent air and water pollution. But today, we wanted to talk to you about what you can do to help. Yeah, the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, has several tips for keeping our air clean. You can cut down on car emissions by carpooling, using public transportation, and even walking or biking when possible. They also have their Indoor Plus program, which encourages construction practices, and product specifications that minimize exposure to airborne pollutants. You can also help your school and home by identifying and removing asbestos, radon, mold, and mildew. Likewise, you can use environmentally safe paints and disinfectants. So there are many things you can do to prevent air pollution, but there are also several things you can do to prevent water pollution. Everyone can make sure we take care of our storm drains in a number of ways. Pick up trash and throw it in a garbage can. Litter can get into storm drains and cause them to clog and overflow. Likewise, never blow leaves from your yard into the street. Leaves can also block storm drains. Never put fertilizer on your lawn just before it rains. The chemicals could wash into storm drains. Also, don't put motor oil down a storm drain. That could contaminate waterways. Instead, take it to the nearest auto parts store and they'll dispose of it safely for free. When we pollute our storm drains, that water runs downstream and contaminates other bodies of water. It can even find its way to the ocean. But sometimes our actions impact the oceans directly. That's true, like sunscreen. Research shows that when you put on certain sunscreens and then swim in the ocean, the chemicals contaminate the water and can actually deteriorate coral reefs. However, you should always wear sunscreen when you're in the sun. So consider switching to a reef safe sunscreen. This also helps our rivers and streams because if sunscreen chemicals are released into our freshwater sources, they can leave oily films that can hurt the wildlife. To keep all of our waterways safe, it's best not to put anything in them. As we like to say, leave no trace. To help us, there are also a number of online tools you can use to help prevent air and water pollution too. In our last Woodsy Owl Live program, we talked about the MyTree and iTree online tools, as well as the Globe Observer app. Since trees are so great at cleaning both our air and our water, I think it bears repeating. So let's rewind the clock a bit and check out that video again, featuring my younger self. Since trees are so important in the natural cycles on Earth and in making the effects of climate change less severe, there are lots of ways that you can learn more about trees and their importance. I'm going to tell you about a quick way that you can learn about the value of a tree or even several trees. And then you can impress your friends and family with very interesting facts. I, mean, I really think this is so cool. So look, you pick a tree and it can be anywhere. It can be in your yard. It can be on the street where you live, or you can even go down to the park. Anywhere and any tree works just fine. You'll need a measuring tape, or you can just estimate the size. And then you'll need to know what kind of tree you've selected. Out here, 
I've used everything from the maples and even the poplar trees that we have in the area. Okay, we'll do this real quick. Let's get started. We're gonna go to mytree.itreetools.org. All right, I'm looking at this forested area behind my backyard and checking out a tree that's right over there. I'm gonna put in the address. Next, I'll describe my tree. And I'll just put in this brief description. This tree is a black poplar. It's in excellent condition. It's 72 inches around. It's true, I measured. And it does get full sun. No, it's not within 60 feet of a building. All right, so now let's get my tree benefits. <laughs> Whoa! I can see that over the lifetime of this tree, it's sequestered an equivalent of 60,000 626 and a half pounds of carbon. And this year alone was 10.76 pounds. Good gracious. If you think about it, one gallon of gas burned in a car equals about 20 pounds of CO2. Wow. So that means that this tree has saved basically the equivalent of 3,031 gallons of gas. All right, let's have a look at this guide if you want to get into this stuff at home. www.itreetools.org. If you're thinking about planting a tree in your yard, you can also use this app to research how the location can reduce your heating and cooling costs. Your parents will love that. Globe Observer is another program you ought to check out to learn about how trees are related to the carbon cycle. This is a citizen science project with NASA. NASA is taking lots of satellite information on trees to see how forests are impacting the planet on a global scale, and especially how forests and other vegetation and the oceans are absorbing carbon emissions. NASA can get a lot of information from satellites, but they need your help to verify the measurements that have been made from outer space. And observations from citizen scientists can help fill in the gaps in that data. And that, friends, is where you come in. Just download the Globe Observer app and go out and measure some trees. Here's a quick video to show you exactly how it works. Find a tree to measure and open the Trees tool. Aim your camera at the base of the tree and then the top. Walk to the base of the tree, counting your steps. The app will calculate the height for you. When you're done, share your observations with researchers and other citizen scientists. Thanks, younger and slightly less gray m -shot. The Globe Observer app is great, but we also wanted to tell you about a few of the other tools Globe offers. Globe stands for Global Learning and Observations to Benefit the Environment. It's a program that collects information worldwide from citizen scientists. A citizen scientist is anyone who collects data to share with professional scientists for collaborative science projects. That's right, you could be a citizen scientist. GLOBE offers many, many citizen science projects. For example, one project is asking students to take samples at their local waterways and measure its pH. The more data they collect, the more accurately they can determine the health of entire watersheds. GLOBE has many projects for a variety of grade levels. And actually, so does the Natural Enquirer. The Natural Enquirer program takes scientific research papers and writes them in a language for students at many grade levels like this publication called Freshwater, which has an article titled Green Means Clean. Here, they explain how to protect drinking water. All of the Natural Enquirer publications are free to order or download, so please consider using all of these tools that we've recommended. Not only will you learn how to help fight pollution, you'll actually be a part of the solution. And who knows, maybe you'll love it so much you'll want to make a career out of keeping our air and waters clean. Or maybe you'd like to pursue a career in managing trees, since they play such an important role in reducing pollution. In fact, our friend at the Forest Service, Farah Masumi, made a video about some possible options. Let's check it out. Hi, Farah. Hi, Farah. We can't say enough about how important trees are for our environment. 
their breathing cleans our air, and their drinking cleans our water. If you are thinking about a career working with trees, there are lots of areas you could pursue. The Forest Service employs lots of different tree experts. Biologists study broader forest ecosystems. Dendroecologists use tree rings to study climate disturbances, while dendrochronologists use tree rings to determine the years that certain events occurred. Forest geneticists compare tree DNA. Forestry technicians collect and analyze tree data. Plant ecologists study how plants function in landscapes. Plant ecophysiologists study how plants interact with their environment. Plant pathologists study plant health. Research foresters study how trees establish and grow in forest. Silviculturists study ways to sustainably manage forest. Urban ecologists study relationships of organisms and their urban environment. If you'd like a great jumping off point, check out the Natural Enquirer Scientist and Engineer cards, which are free to order or download. These cards highlight our rock stars in tree science, so you can see if their jobs sound interesting to you. For example, our friend, Dr. Rima Lucardi, is a plant ecologist with the USDA Forest Service. One of the things she studies is how invasive species impact native plants. She helps answer a lot of questions we have about how all organisms interact with their environment. Thanks, Farah. Speaking of questions, be sure to check out our next Woodsy Owl Live video coming up in one week. Join us for a live question and answer program where our experts will answer your questions live. Also, leave a question in the comments section of this video before September 21st, 2023. We'll try to answer it during that live show. But why wait until then? If you're looking for more programs like this one, check out our other FS Nature Live series. We have programs on climate change, freshwater, grasslands, pollinators, and much more. In fact, you can even find our previous Woodsy programs. That's Woodsy Owl Live 1 and 2 on the Natural Enquirer YouTube channel. In the meantime, remember what Woodsy Owl always says. Give a hoot, don't pollute.